Hello and welcome to Plab One uh, Discussions. I'm Dr. Leila Saeed. I'm a UK-based GP and clinical educator. Today we're going to be running through a case study and discussing the diagnosis and also the other answers that were given as an option. So we have a 55-year-old lady who has been complaining of bilateral stiffness and swelling of the metacarpal phalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints of her hands for the last six months. The stiffness is worse in the morning and lasts more than an hour. On examination, there is soft swelling around the joints of her hands. There are no nail changes and no other joints are affected. What is the single most likely diagnosis from? So we have osteoarthritis, gout, rheumatoid arthritis, polymyalgia rheumatica and psoriatic arthritis. The most likely single diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis. So now now let's have um, a little bit of a look into rheumatoid arthritis and also discuss the other options. So let's now have a run through of rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is made up of classical symptoms and I've taken these classical symptoms from CKS 2019 diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis and these guidelines are a condensed version of the NICE guidelines. So in rheumatoid arthritis we'll see symmetrical joint synovitis of the small joints of the hands and the feet. Any other synovial joints may be affected but we typically see in the small joints of the hands and the feet. The patient may also complain of pain, swelling, heat and stiffness in the affected joints. So the pain that they describe, it may be worse in the morning and that's because it tends to be worse at rest or during periods of inactivity. The swelling will be around the joint and we have to be very careful that when patients describe the uh, symptom of swelling that we elicit, is it around the joint or is it around the bone? And in rheumatoid arthritis, it is around the joint. When we palpate this swelling, it typically feels boggy, and that is because of the sign of itis that we, that we typically see in rheumatoid arthritis. Patients will also complain of stiffness, and this stiffness is early morning stiffness, and it usually lasts for one hour. Again, it's very important that when a patient complains of joint stiffness, that we elicit how long that stiffness lasts for, and what part of the day that it does affect them. The epidemiology I've taken from the Oxford Clinical Handbook of Medicine. So the prevalence tends to be around 1%. It affects females more than men. And the peak onset is between the fifth and sixth decade. So in our case, our patient was 55 years old and a female. Diagnosis is made up of a... um, a collection of clinical diagnosis. So this will mean taking a thorough history of presenting complaint, speaking to the patient about their family history as there is a genetic component to rheumatoid arthritis and as well as that doing a thorough um, examination of the joints. As well as that we will then use bloods to support our diagnosis. So blood tests in particular that are useful in making a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis include rheumatoid factor um, and as well as that anti-CCP which has a specificity of 98%. Alongside that, we will do a full blood count. So we may see a anemia of chronic disease. We may see raised platelets and a raised ESR and CRP as inflammatory markers. With radiology, we will see a soft tissue swelling just to articular osteopenia and reduced joint space. As the disease progresses, the radiological signs may also um, indicate bony erosions and subluxation. Let's now have a think about the other um, conditions that were offered to us as options. So number one, so right at the top, we have osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is a very common condition that I see often in primary care. It typically affects the large joints, um, i.e. hip and the knee, but it may also affect the joints of the hands and the feet. Um, If it does affect the joints in the hands, it's typically the distal interphalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint. The symptoms are often worse after prolonged activity, such as the knee and the hip after walking. When we palpate 
um, the the joints of the hands, if it was to affect the joints of the hands, um, we might also notice the sort of hard swelling, which is very different to the swelling that we see in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and this is because of the osteophytes formation that we see in osteoarthritis. With gout, um, this tends to be an acute episode of pain, swelling and redness of the joint. So in our case, we um, our patient had her symptoms for six months. This makes gout unlikely. Um, in gout, it's severe joint inflammation and swelling. So patients complain of a lot of pain. In more than 50% of patients, um, the uh, symptoms um, often occur in the metatarsal phalangeal joint of the big toe. It can affect other joints, i.e. the hand may be affected. But again, we're thinking of what is most common. Uh, gout can be difficult to differentiate from septic arthritis, and that is because of the acute onset of red, hot, swollen joint. So we've already discussed rheumatoid arthritis. So next, polymyalgia rheumatica. So with po uh, polymyalgia rheumatica, so known as PMR, it does affect patients in their 50s, which was the case um, that we discussed here. But it is it tends to present in a subacute condition. So usually the patients present within two weeks of their symptoms starting. And it tends to present with morning stiffness of the shoulder, the hips and the proximal limb muscles. So not really um, affecting the hands, although you may see a polyarthritis. And lastly, we have the option of psoriatic arthritis. So psoriatic arthritis is one of the spondyloarthropathies. It tends to be associated with psoriasis, um, in fact, affecting 10 to 40 percent of patients with psoriasis. Uh, PSA, um, which sometimes it can be shortened down to, has various different presentations. It may affect the joint symmetrically, which we may see um, in, in patients with this condition. And sometimes that can get confused with rheumatoid arthritis. We may see in the distal interphalangeal joint. We may also see a asymmetrical oligoarthritis. There may be spinal involvement and very rarely there is a version of um, psoriatic arthritis, which is um, called psoriatic arthritis mutilans. In 80% of patients, there are nail changes. So in this patient, we didn't have any nail changes. Um, I hope that you found this discussion useful um, and that it gave you some um, focus when it comes to your revision. Um, here I've just placed the references. Thank you very much.